I'm going to talk about toning white paper. I mostly use Reeves BFK printmaking paper. I also use watercolor paper some, but I've grown accustomed to the printmaking paper. It has a different texture and it does not take the beading that your watercolor paper does. Uh, in fact, the surface, uh, when it's saturated, begins to pill a little bit. Sometimes it actually, the top layer rips. And uh, while some painters might gasp about that, I happen to like it because when I paint over it, again, it gives me good texture. So uh, I like the fact that uh, Reeves paper uh, lives and breathes with me, so to speak, a little more than the watercolor paper. Now I've used a lot of different printmaking papers and I've uh, grown to love Reeves the most. Uh, it does take a little more of a beading than some of the other printmaking papers. And uh, I, I, I like the cloth-like feel of it. So um, to me, it's preferred. It's something a little different. Uh, the paint sets up differently on it than it does on watercolor paper. And uh, so I use different colors of Reeves. It comes in uh, four different colors, including white. Today, I have a, a piece of white. Is this uh, a, a, quite a pure white? And uh, I'm going to tone it. Uh, sort of a tea stained. Um, it's easier for me working against the clock with a figure to use a toned piece of paper because then I can use that tone as part of the color nuances and uh, don't have to worry quite as much uh, as if I'm using white. It's just it, it allows me to work a little faster to get a com uh, finished painting. Uh, I like a brownish tone. I use sepia a lot. Sepia is uh, a bit cool though for toning, let's see what we have here. And uh, you just you just keep adding water uh, and saturate the paper the way as if it were watercolor paper. And I use Skip Lawrence's Skipper brush, and um, I have a brand new one here from Cheap Joe's. You can see there's quite a difference in these products. The one, this one, 12 years old, it's been whittled away into a nice filbert with a sharp edge and this brand new brush. So this actually for toning paper is better. It's, got, it's more of a mop and uh, probably holds a little more paint than my very own brush of, with some age on it. This is sepia. Get a nice puddle here. And just put it on like so. That's it. Just let it soak and run. You would do this on watercolor paper if you cared to tone it. A lot of watercolorists do tone their paper. Sometimes they'll use a color of light like a soft yellow of some sort or sometimes tea stained. This is not hard to do. It does, in fact, take little time. That's a nice color. I like it. It's, uh, it's much grayer than the tan printmaking paper that I often work on. So something a little different were I to use this for a painting, and I will one day. The tone is a little uneven to the good. It's uh, a little richer on the left than the right. Whoops, I am picking up crud off my palette. Well, we don't care about that. That was not part of the plan, but there we have it. These are erasure pieces, and when the paper's dry, they'll just flick off. Now I can all, if I cared to, I could wipe that back almost to white, but not quite. So it really is uh, a lovely surface to paint on. There's a lot of subtle 
color changes here. And those flecks of erasure from the easel will actually just blow off later. And that is how you tone a paper.